Hey guys, it's me, Arlene, Delicious Delights, and welcome to my channel. Today, I have a little bit of, of a different video for you. <laughs> so, obviously, with perfume stores, at least where I live, I live in the Netherlands, perfume stores are closed. I don't know where to get samples of new release perfumes as I normally do. Usually what I do is visit stores and, you know, ask for samples and test it on my skin. And, you know, there's so many perfume stores in the city here that it's ha it's really easy to get access to new release perfumes. But now things are, things have changed. Obviously, things are closed. I There are so many new releases now and I don't have access to them and I want to try them and I'm really excited about them, but I can't. So I guess testing them on my skin... Um, and getting samples will have to be put on hold but I do want to talk about new releases that have been recent, re recently released um, women's perfumes that I'm looking forward to testing so I just want to talk uh, about those perfumes there are five here that uh, I want to mention and I'm going to leave the fragrance that I'm most looking forward to testing out as soon as this whole thing blows over the situation um, hopefully soon, I don't know, but um, as soon as all this blows over, I do want, there's one that I am absolutely just dying to try. I like almost, I might even blind by it, I don't know, just based on the notes. And I don't <laughs> encourage that, but it's fun and I don't know, I just, you know, you just have to go with your gut feeling, I guess. So let's begin with the first one, This uh, the first fragrance I want to talk about is a new release from the house of Giorgio Armani and it's called Ocean di, di Gioia or Ocean di Gioia and this is obviously a flanker of Aqua di Gioia which there are other fragrances from this line that I don't think I've talked about very much on my channel but Ocean di Gioia uh, has notes of pear, citruses and green notes in the top in the mid there's water, jasmine, lily of the valley, rose and salt Salt being, I think, a very interesting note, I think, just across all of uh, perfumes. Whenever there's salt in perfumes, I, I kind of, like, my ears kind of perk up a little bit. <laughs> and in the base, there's musk and sandalwood. So I talked about another fragrance. I think it was Sky de Gioia. And I have tested the other perfumes. There's also the regular Aqua de Gioia. And I think in general, the de, de Gioia line from Armani, I think that... They're pleasant, they're easy to wear, they just seem to be nice and fresh and clean and versatile, probably better for spring, summer kind of thing. But for me, I haven't really fell in love with any of the Aqua de Joya line, although I think they're nice and they're probably like fragrances that are that most people would like like they're mass appealing but for me personally there hasn't been any um from the joya line that i just felt like i needed to own um so although i'm i'm looking forward to trying this out i'm not hopeful that it's going to be something i am going to be falling in love with so that's the first one the second fragrance new release is not even a re uh, technically not really a new release it's just a different bottle so from the house of YSL Yves Saint Laurent uh, there's black opium storm illusion so storm illusion is pretty much just the same fragrance as the original black opium which we all know and either love or hate and I have made a black opium best a uh, worst to best or best to worst video on that so I can link that down for you guys if you guys want to know what I think about black opium and a lot of the flankers but storm illusion is just the same fragrance in a different bottle it has like this lightning bolt here you'll see a picture here somewhere <laughs> and it's like glittery and I think the bottle looks really nice so for all of you black opium bottle collectors this one is just super uh super nice <laughs> it's nice to look at uh, it has like the this rock and roll kind of thing going on with the, the lightning bolt as i said and it's all glittery and honestly when i saw the picture of this uh it immediately reminded me of gem and for those of you um 90s 80s 90s babies 
you guys know who Jem is. She is <laughs> that cartoon character. And then there's the Misfits and it was so cool and it was like colorful and she had this like really big pink hair and I absolutely loved that cartoon series when I was a kid. So yeah, <laughs> that's what I associated this Black Opium Storm Illusion bottle too. So yeah. Anyways, I would love to try this fragrance just for fun. Well, even though it's a fragrance, it's the same fragrance, but maybe maybe if you, if we if I were to scent Gem or scent the Misfits, maybe Black Opium in this particular bottle would be suitable. All right, so the third fragrance I want to talk about is from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. This is another flanker of Scandal, and this is called Jean-Paul Gaultier So Scandal. So the bottle of this one has the same, almost the same design as the original ones before the, <laughs> the original Scandal, but it has like these ridges along the, the bottle. You'll see it somewhere here. And... Um, it has like a darker juice. I have not seen it in person, but just based on the pictures, that's uh, what um, the bottle looks like. So yes, I do think this bottle is stunning. <laughs> I always thought thought that was the case with the legs in the air. It's a, it's a little, it can be a little much, I think, but I think just for, even just for display purposes, it would be really cute just to own and probably a reason why people would want to collect this bottle or this collection because of the bottle. And I think that that's already the case with Classique. And there's so many, <laughs> I don't know how many flankers of Classique there are, or even just bottle, different bottles with the same fragrance of Classique. But the Torso bottle, everyone knows all about. And now everyone knows about the, the Scandal bottle. And I think that Jean-Paul Gaultier um, needs to not needs to, has probably the most uh, interesting looking bottle designs in all of perfumery. So, So Scandal is a floral and feminine fragrance. Uh, apparently it's more daring and more sensual, but I think that in write-ups of perfumes, I usually it's like there's words of daring and sensual in it. In the top there's orange blossom, in the mid there's tuberose and jasmine, and in the base of So Scandal there's milky notes. So the milky notes is what kind of interests me about this perfume. Uh, when I think of milky perfumes, I, it's like for me, it's like an automatic gourmandy type of thing. And so mixing milky notes with some florals or orange blossom, tuberose, jasmine, which are very, very typical florals that we find in a lot of uh, women's perfumes. I am very interested in trying this one. Um, talking about the other flankers, the other perfumes in this collection where the where there was scandal the original scandal thought it was okay it was like this honeyish gourmand with uh, focusing on gardenia i thought it was okay but i wasn't like in love with it um then there was scandal by night which i first of all when i first tried it i was like meh <laughs> and then after i tried it and tried it and tried it again and kept on testing it this one started growing on me more and more. So Scandal by Night is basically a very thick and dense, uh, rich, uh, honeyish tuberose scent, very syrupy, fruity, and it was so intense that I remember whenever I've tested it, I had like this humongous sillage and scent bubble around me that was fantastic. Uh, this is probably, from what I've tried, the best from the line, the Scandal by Night. And then after that, there was a scandal a Paris or a Paris, but I do remember there was like some floral, I think it was jasmine or something like that. Uh, but mm, yeah, that one was a pass for me. And now they're so scandal, <laughs> a milky floral scent with um, focusing on orange blossom. And um, yeah, orange blossom is in a lot, is a main note in classique if I remember correctly, in the Classique line. And so if they brought a little bit of that orange blossom into this line, the Scandal line, with some milky notes, I'm really, <laughs> that really does get my interest. I'm really uh, looking forward to trying that. All right, so the fourth fragrance I wanna talk about 
is from the house of Victor and Rolf. Again, it's another flanker, of course. This is a flanker of Flower Bomb, and the new release is called Flower Bomb Dew. So this one comes in a very uh, interesting looking bottle. It's the same bottle as Flower Bomb Bloom. This one has notes in the top of Dewdrop, Pear, Bergamot, and Ambrette. In the mid, there's Iris and Rose. And in the base, there's Musk, Cashmere, and Heliotrope. Uh, this is classified as a powdery, musky, floral, woody scent um, with Rose. So honestly, you guys, I'm not that much looking forward to this release. I think the bottle looks interesting, but with the house, no, with the collection of Flower Bomb, I don't know. I think that they're pleasant scents. They're, but there hasn't been any of them that I felt like I needed to own. Like they are very sweet and they're recognizable. They're familiar. I think a lot of people wear the original Flower Bomb. It's probably one of the be better sellers or maybe even the top 10 of recent um, women's bestsellers. It's always in the top. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's because of the actual juice or because of the cute bottle that it's in. <laughs> I have no idea. But uh, for me, Flower uh, flower Bomb, just the collection is, is nice. But just that. It's very typical. It reminds me a lot of La Vie et Belle, to be honest. And again, I kind of struggled with that fragrance. But with Flower Bomb as a collection, it was just like... I think for me, just like middle of the road, average, it's okay, it's nice, it's mass appealing, uh, but maybe for me, it feels a little bit more of a youthful line, <laughs> or maybe something more for like younger women, and it, I don't think it really suits my personality. Um, so other thing, other ones in this collection, there's of course the flower, the, the original Flower Bomb, and then there's Flower Bomb Bloom, which I think is my favorite from what I've tried from uh, the Flower Bomb collection, and then there's Flower Bomb Nectar, and then the La Vie and Rose, and then I don't know how many flankers. But anyways, Flower Bomb Dew, if I see it in the store, I'll test it anyway, I'll probably review it, uh, but not something that I'm like dying to try. Okay, so, <laughs> this is a long video, I know. So the last one I wanna talk about, the fifth perfume uh, that I wanna talk about, new release, this is the one that I am looking most forward to. And, oh gosh, this is from the wonderful house of Hermes, one of my favorite houses, probably one of the best um, designer houses out there, especially when it comes out to, to their perfumes. This is Hermes. L'Ombre de Merveille, so, or L'Ombre, I don't know how <laughs> to say it, because there's another, there's another perfume uh, called L'Ombre de Merveille, but this one is kind of, is, I don't know how to pronounce it, L'Ombre, well, I don't know, anyways, <laughs> uh, L'Ombre de Merveille, um, a flanker of Eau de Merveille, and lots of flanker, there's a lot of flankers in this collection, so this is the newest one, I am a huge fan of the Mervé line. Um, I love the original. I uh, I owned the Elixir, Elixir before um, and L'Ombre de Mervé is my favorite and now they came up with this new one. It has really sexy notes when I read these to you. I was just I was just like wowed by the notes. There's only three notes listed with this one. In the top there's black tea. In the mid there's incense and in the base there's tonka so three notes but just thinking of how these notes would smell together is totally like <laughs> getting me excited seriously because um, they just sound so rich and dark and mysterious and almost kind of magical i also find um, the bottles uh, design of the Merve line to be just really whimsical and magical with the stars in it. And you guys know it's in that uh, uh, round, strange, diagonal bottle. <laughs> so there's, uh, it's classified as being balsamic, green, aromatic, sp spicy, and smoky. The perfumer is Christine Nagel, which is now the house perfumer of Hermes. And so I'm really looking forward to this, not only because of the notes, but 
I think tea in no tea and perfumes, tea notes in perfumes are absolutely gorgeous. I love I love it. I have done a dedicated tea perfume video. I can link that for you guys down there. I did that a long, long time ago. I should probably do an updated one. But some tea fragrances that I enjoy, um, Gucci Porom 2, which is discontinued. It's marketed for men, but it's this gorgeous black tea that smells like dry Darjeeling black tea leaves. And it smells amazing. There's a little bit of a smokiness in there and a little bit of spiciness. And it's just so smooth and it's just really really sexy <laughs> i really love that fragrance and then other tea fragrances there's the of course the elizabeth arden green tea collection which are very affordable and something i do want to talk about at some point on my channel in the future and then of course there's the bulgari tea series and i am just so excited for this release you guys uh lombre the way it's spelled in this perfume in French translates into shadow or shaded or darkened so now I'm thinking of like sipping a fresh hot cup of black tea in some like abandoned old church um, with you can still smell the incense in the air and then the woodiness of um, the wood pews <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I forgot the name of it. But yeah, I'm just getting a lot of imagery going on with when I think of this perfume and I'm excited and I don't know, you guys, I kind of feel like blind buying it because I have no idea when things will go back to normal and by the sounds of it, it looks like it's not going to be back to normal for a while because like honestly, when you go into a perfume store, you have those tester bottles and then, you know, thinking about touching them and how many other people have touched it, it's just going to be really difficult. So... Yeah, who knows what's going to happen. But anyways, that was my video today of five perfumes, five new release perfumes that will be released in 2020. And the most, and the fragrance that I am looking forward to trying the most being Hermes L'Ombre de Merve. Underrated line for sure. And um, if you're able to try this entire collection, please do. It is so underrated. It's unbelievable. And I think it's just like a hidden gem for sure in designer perfumes. Very unique and um, magical <laughs> and beautiful. So thank you guys so much for watching. I know this is a long video, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know which new releases you're looking forward to testing. And yeah, that's it for me for today, but so I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.